when I first started shooting drone footage, I didn't think much about intelligent flight modes in general. But I thought that I should practice my flying technique to become an accomplished flying video maker. The result was that most of my clips had problems. Not staying in position long enough, slowing down or accelerating, jerky jaw or gimbal movements. Since I started using intelligent flight mode regularly, my drone videos have improved a lot. Tapfly is not the most spectacular fly mode, but it is one of the most frequently used and allows consistently excellent results. For this tutorial I will be using a Mavic 2 zoom. The different DJI modes have specific variation of this mode, so it is a bit confusing, but they function more or less in a similar way. If we tap on the icon for intelligent flight mode and then on tap fly, we are presented with a choice of three or four different modes. Let's see how they work and what they are useful for. The first one is forward and it is present in all models, although for whatever reason it is often named direction mode. When we enter forward mode, we have a vertical slider for controlling the speed of flight. The coverage of speed is excellent, from very slow, almost good enough for hyperlapses, to very fast. Speed can be modified during flight using this slide. Towards the center of the screen there is a horizontal line representing the horizon. By tapping on the line at the very center, the drone will advance into a straight light at constant altitude. By tapping above or below the line, the bird will ascend or descend. If we tap to the left or the right, the aircraft will curve towards that direction. By tapping very far from the center, the movement will be quite abrupt, while if we tap slightly to the side, the curve will be more gentle. It is possible to tap several times to the side in small increments to make a smoother large curve. Note that if you are tapping toward an obstacle, the input will not be accepted. In this mode, we have control only on the gimbal tilt. So, when is forward tap fly useful? Well, approaching pushing shots are very common and not too difficult to perform. But by using this mode, you are sure to get perfect results at constant speed every single time. Maybe with a slight upwards or downwards movement. This mode is excellent for revealing shots looking downwards at first, and then rising in altitude and gently turning the gimbal upwards, while we move forward. Sometimes we can add a bit of sideways movement to reveal a different point of interest. These sort of revealing shots are extremely useful and quite difficult to perform. Using forward tap fly, we can concentrate simply on the gentle tilt of the gimbal. This mode is also very useful for bird-eye top-down views. Where we generally want to fly very slowly and precisely. Reverse mode works in the same way, but everything is inverted. By tapping above the horizon line, the altitude will decrease, and vice versa. By tapping to the sides, it will fly in the opposite direction, of course backwards. 
For a long time I dismissed this flight mode and only recently I realized that it is the perfect tool for one of the most powerful shots. The reversed revealing shot. With aircraft pointing to a scene, we fly backwards and generally downwards to have a new element entering the screen. I don't want to encourage risky flying, so in this example I remain very far from the revealed element. But by flying closer the result can be very spectacular. Or else we can use the zoom function in the Mavic 2 zoom to achieve the impression of being much closer. The third mode is called free, and is very similar to the extremely popular course lock mode of the Phantom series. The setup is similar to forward mode. We set the speed with a slider and the direction of flight by tapping. But in this mode we have control of the yaw, the direction where the camera is pointing. even though the drone is flying towards the chosen direction. In other words, this mode disconnects the direction of the flight from the direction of the camera. This is a very popular shot. Flying in a straight line past a landmark while keeping the camera pointed towards it. In this case, the phantom version of this mode, called course lock, has a slight advantage as it allows to come back and shoot the same clip from the opposite direction by simply moving the right stick backwards. While with the Mavic 2 we need to turn the bird around and reset the new direction. I use this mode relatively often, but I often get average results as controlling the yaw and the gimbal tilt at the same time is not easy. It is very important to adjust the general settings of your drone for smoother transactions. I have done a video about it, I will post a link at the end. The new Everlapse mode in the Mavic 2 has a similar intelligent mode, but it allows not only to set the direction of flight, but also to draw a box around the point of interest, so that the camera will be locked to it. I think it would be a huge improvement to implement this function in this mode. Panic shots are certainly the most boring one, and in my opinion should be avoided. But sometimes in a clip we want to show some extra width. With free tap fly mode we can set the drone to fly forward, maybe ascending or descending slightly, and then add the panning movement with the left stick. And now it looks much more cinematic. If you want to improve the quality of your drone footage and have consistently good clips, I certainly suggest you to use intelligent flight modes and tap fly in particular. The biggest cause of mistake in drone filming is hesitation. I find that by planning in advance and having a set of standard automized shots is the best way to produce quality footage day in and day out. If you found this video useful, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Happy flying!